Welcome to I and I Studio. I am back with Cold Wax 101. Today we're going to attempt to find composition and to quiet down noisy areas. So I told you with the last video that we start out kind of throwing everything but the kitchen sink in, just trying to build up the surface to get some texture. Uh, the colors that we use will just be flecks coming through um, on our top layers, possibly. Possibly they won't show up at all. That's an interesting uh, stage. It's kind of fun. You don't worry too much. After doing it for a couple of days, I start to get a little bit edgy because it really, really does start to look like a hot mess. And because I'm not really experienced in this medium the way I'd like to be, I still get nervous and doubt myself. Can I pull this off? Um, I've started five. This one really needs help. I had some leftover green and I just covered up a lot of it with green because I was really unhappy with it. But there are some possibilities and um, looking forward to working into that. Here's another one that I had that leftover uh, green and I quieted a lot of that area uh, down with green yesterday. Looks sort of like the first one. These next ones I think are a little little easier to maybe find composition in. I think there's a little more variety here. I've already started to quiet it down with uh, white. I added a little um, yellow to the white to warm it up just a touch. You can really see it in this one, which is at this point probably my favorite. My favorite because I have a lot of contrast. The colors are bright, they're clear. I tend to get muddy in cold wax and one of my goals is to try to keep my colors clear and bright. I want to work with light, getting light into the composition. And here's the fifth one. Again, these are very, very confused, very messy, directionless. Remember, I've mounted them onto newsprint and taped the edge. So when I take the tape off, that in itself will be a, a great improvement. But let's go into the other room and mess around with these and see if we can get anywhere today. Okay, I'm going to start with a fun trick. And what you're going to need for that is, um, this is a uh, powdered charcoal or you can use powdered graphite. I'm going to use the charcoal because it's a little darker. I just have a little powder in there, not much left. Then I take a piece of this raffia. And the reason that I like raffia rather than regular string, although you certainly can use any kind of string, but the reason I like the raffia is that it has thin pieces, almost hair-like pieces, and then thick pieces. So this is a fun um, thing to do. I take the raffia, put it right inside the bottle with the powdered charcoal. Get it all in. Put the lid on, and I'm going to shake it just to get the charcoal all over the raffia. Now, I worked on this yesterday. I, it's actually, it's quite dry, and this is the last one I worked on in the afternoon, so let's hope it's not too dry. What I'm going to need is a piece of wax paper.
in a brayer. So pull your raffia out. Get the bottle out of the way because uh, I've spilled that before. It's a big mess. And then kind of lay it sort of randomly on your piece. Now, the reason that I chose this particular piece was it has a lot of quiet space already. And you can see I've already got a lot of um, charcoal that's made little dots. I, I kind of like that. Now, cover with wax paper and brayer. Now you might be able to use this wax paper to get another transfer. We'll try that later. There may not be enough charcoal on, but we'll see. Okay, I've got a little bit of an imprint. You see that? That's kind of a neat mark, isn't it? If we take this and put it down in a quiet area, Let's see if we can get a little bit of more of a transfer down here. Not much. And I think that part of the reason is that I didn't have a lot of charcoal on this. Another reason is that this is drier than I had expected. So that's one little fun mark that I have to work with. So the goal today is to try to look at it and see where might I find um, composition. Um, this one doesn't isn't giving me a whole lot. I have this blue up in the corner that I like quite a bit. Now I have some marks here that I like. Here it gets a little muddy for me and I would probably get rid of that, but this part alone doesn't look too good if I block the rest of that off. Um, so let's just get started and see what the heck we can, we can do. Remember, cold wax is... 50% cold wax, 50% paint. What I'm seeing here is that <clears throat> I have a lot of opaque colors down. I think what's called for now is a transparent color. What? Do I want do I hmm I don't think if I go over it with an orange it would be too pretty. A green, a transparent green. I think there's a lot of green in there. Blue. So what I've done is I've made some color samples on the bottom to see what I might like to use. None of these are going to give me the contrast I want. They're going to keep this all within about the same uh, hue with greens and blues. Eventually, I'm going to have to uh, lighten it up. And then I'm going to have to contrast with some yellows or golds. It's just... It's a boring piece. Um, this sampling has helped me to see what color I might like to use. And because of the brightness and clarity, I think I'm going to choose ultramarine. It seems to have a bit of a transparency, which I want. Um, some of the other colors I've put down, this is a light gray. 
And that is something that I may use to lighten it up. Um, this was a hooker screen. So if I want to deepen the green, I can use this hooker screen. I tried uh, Prussian blue. Um, that's a Prussian blue, the second one, which is also quite transparent. Payne's gray, very dark, almost black. And indigo, which also is very, very dark and okay. So let me put these all over to the side. Let's see what we can do. Put my blob of cold wax down. I don't think I'm going to mix up a huge amount of color. I'm still not at the stage with this one where I'm finding the composition yet. I'm still fooling around with putting the colors down and that's okay. Some of them take quite a long time before you can see forms developing. Um, let's see, maybe I'll play off of this blue that I already have. Okay, so you can see as I skim the top, it skips and I get these really pretty interesting shapes. Everything that's underneath it is important as it will come up in some form or another. I can get so into what's happening with these details that it is hard to see the big picture for me. Whereas with acrylic, I'm more um, throwing the paint in the direction that I want. I'm getting the color that I want right away, uh, getting the, the movement and the gesture right away. So it's just a different thing. Now, even these color swatches I put at the bottom, I think they're interesting. Another thing that happens, you can see the areas where I am getting texture and the areas where I'm not getting texture. You can reintroduce texture anytime. That paint isn't real thick, so I'm not getting a lot of texture there. Just a little. Boy, that orange, I don't know, can you see that orange? It's really looking good with the blue. And now I'm feeling like I might want to use this light gray and try to find a little contrast here. at the same time that I'm quieting down by taking a darker color next to a lighter color. And I can really kind of quickly lighten up a lot of this. Hopefully the green will come through. You can press a little harder on your scraper to get a little bit more of the green showing through if you'd like. Um, and then when you load up the scraper a little thicker, you can really make a, a thicker texture.
thick, over thin, over texture, over areas of no texture. See, I got a little blue in there. Scrape that up. All of a sudden you have a mountain. Isn't that funny? First there is a mountain, then there is no mountain, then there is. <laughs> oh, Donovan's song, in case you don't know. Now, let's continue. I like what's happening with the light. See, it's really changing the nature of the composition. And I am not obligated to find that composition today. Remember, I have five pieces to work on. So be patient. Allow yourself just to be in the unknown. I'm going to add a tiny bit of that blue to this just to get a little uh, color differentiation so everything isn't the same. That's a nice light blue color. I like it. And what I want to do is I want to come down into this area. Oh, nice. That's beautiful. When I went over the wet, ooh. Isn't that gorgeous? Question is, how am I going to fit that into the whole the whole picture when I'm finally able to find that picture. Well, I... It's a lot more interesting than it was. And I'm still not truly inspired yet. Now, what I may do... Should we try this now, coming back with the string over here while it's wet? Let's see how that might work. I think I put the string, did I put it back in? No. As a matter of fact, let's use a little twine if I can get it untangled. This is a big piece of twine. This is thicker. It's going to hold more of the color. They make more of a statement. Sometimes I use the twine and I can even see the um, twist in the twine. Shake it up. I just keep doing this and then all of a sudden it will start making sense. It's not making sense yet, but I am getting more contrast, which I like. Oh, that's a long piece of twine. Get out of there. Okay. Whoa, still coming. There we go. See, I'm getting an awful lot of charcoal on the on the paper. And I, I could have shook that off a little bit first. We'll work with it. Need the wax paper over the top. Brayer. I have an octopus. I'm going to stick with the light. I 
I, I really am seeing an octopus here, which I'm kind of loving. See, it's just goofy moves like the one I just made that can kind of help you find your composition in time. Now, whether or not I decide to sort of keep this octopus image, I'm not sure. I just really don't know. I'll work with it for a little while. And maybe it'll morph into something else, something different for me. But it's kind of a way to get unstuck. I'm a little stuck here. That's a lot more dynamic than it was a couple minutes ago. So what I think I'm going to do, since I have five, let me put this one to the side and uh, let me show you a couple more techniques. Okay, I'm going to grab the other piece that had a lot of grain on it, but this one has a lot more to work with here. You can see some beautiful texture there. and. I had an original intention, which was rocks, and with the other one, um, turned into an octopus. But that's okay. I'm willing to go with it. Um, I think I'm going to deepen this area around here. And I'm going to mix a couple of uh, colors of blue. Indigo. I'm going to take the indigo and put it with the ultramarine and I'm going to need to add a little more wax to that. So I'm just adding to what I already have. So this is going to give me a very dark background, which um, then I can come back over it with a light background if I want and the dark underneath will be interesting. So, let's see. Again, I'm getting the texture that was underneath that I like. I don't think that corner is all that interesting. I'm going to go ahead and darken that. start to happen. Really, that's the beauty of cold wax. It's this texture that creates these incredible marks. I love working with these little multimedia artboards because I can so quickly turn them around. Beautiful. What if I leave a little bit of a light green edge on that? down on this. Some orange is showing up from what was several layers ago and I like that. A lot of times when you um, take the edges like I did and we're going straight off of the edge, um, you can actually kind of lose your edge. Where, where was that edge again? So sometimes I'll even uh, re-tape the piece. Yeah, that's interesting. Look at the depth in that. And I'm always telling stories. So I'm seeing um, deep water. Now I'm going to see if I've got enough thing on my palette to get a little blending of these colors. 
The reason I'm doing this blending the colors is then I get a little variation and everything isn't so much the same. This is quite opaque. The other was more transparent. You always have to keep that in mind. Loading up my edge. Beautiful. I'm really in the sea today with the octopus and now with this my aquatic day. Probably because it's raining cats and dogs outside and I'm submerged in rainwater, so definitely form happening. And it does look like more of a rock form. I do want to take some of this, if I have any left, and go back over this with a little bit of the opaque. Nice, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now there's another technique I want to show you. I'm not going to overwhelm you today because I can be at this for hours and that doesn't make sense. Remember I said you come to areas where you kind of lose your texture. This is another way to make texture. You get a piece of tissue paper, wrinkle it up, put that down, take your brayer, go over the top, and see those wrinkles. I hope you can see how cool that is. Now, sometimes, first of all, I have paint left here. Let's try to go over this white and see if we can get some blue lines. Yeah. I got a few blue lines there, which I like. Okay, so last thing I'm going to do um, is say that sometimes the lines look too predictable, like, oh, she took a piece of tissue paper, put it down, and got lines. Let's skim over the lines a little bit. Finesse our lines. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. So... It's actually showing um, a little bit of a reflection here, too, if it were water. Isn't it, isn't it neat? So there's much work to do here. And I'm really slow uh, with cold wax. When I was in Greece studying with Jerry McLaughlin and Rebecca Crowell for two weeks, I think I finished three paintings about this size. Now, on this trip to Ireland with uh, Jerry McLaughlin alone. He says we're going to bring our work in process, what I'm doing here, and he wants us to have six to eight pieces completed in a week. <sighs> That's pushing it for me. <laughs> I'm really slow with this process. I, I do enjoy the journey, though. It's really, it's a fun journey, and um, already today, I'm starting to find composition in these. Um, once I get the composition, then I'll really um, finesse the composition to try to get that light I was talking about. You see, I did get some light here, and I told you it's sort of reading like reflection, but the what I call the rock shapes are lighter the, what I call the water shape is darker 
and it's like the light is reflecting on the dark and that's I've put light into it and I'm uh, I'm pleased about that I wasn't necessarily thinking that that would happen but it did and uh, I can recognize it so I can kind of keep that and say oh that's working later on because I, I saw that taking a dark color and going over it with a blend of a lighter color with some of that dark color in it made light, um, I could do that again, uh, the same process. I could take a little lighter shade and, you know, maybe go over some areas with even a lighter shade and really catch light in that way. So um, I always call that the scientific part of making art. You think, oh, if, if this is a reflection, how would the reflection really look? And we know that water moves, um, sun hits the high points of the water and the low points get deeper. So I'm not going to meticulously paint that. So, some people can and get some really beautiful results. I'm just kind of um, doing it abstractly, seeing what happens. And um, so far, so good. All right. I don't want a realistic rendering of a rock reflecting in the water, but if it abstractly looks like a rock reflecting in the water, I'm fine with that. I'm also going to tell you that the next time you see this, it may not look like this at all. I reserve the right to change my mind. Okay. So thank you for joining me. Um, stay tuned. I'll keep you with me on the process as I work into these cold waxes and um, I'm not perfect with this but I know painting is a practice and I know practice makes perfect. One day I'm going to be good at cold wax and in the meantime I'm going to enjoy that process. Okay, take care. Have a great week.